Hello and welcome back to Minecraft Survival. My name is Concac88 and today we're going to do episode 5 a little bit differently than we've done the last four episodes. We're going to be talking about how I play survival Minecraft, what builds I like to do, how I start my Minecraft survival world, and how I get to the dragon fight. So um, let's go ahead and get ready for uh, how I play survival Minecraft. All right, item one on our list, guys, is picking the right seed. So this is actually the 25th seed that I generated for this world. And my goal was to find a mega taiga biome right next to spawn. Um, I also happened to find a coral reef, which is pretty cool. And it's also surrounded by water, so it makes it pretty accessible to, uh, to get where you need to by boat. So um, I thought this would be a great start to my world. And obviously, I wanted to build an Omega taiga biome. So... Um, that was my uh, my deciding factor for this world and make sure that you are very comfortable with the world before you start playing it You're gonna spend lots of time in this world. So pick a really good seed Now what is the first project you should tackle in your world the first big project? Uh, is building an iron farm you can get this started actually within some of the first days of Minecraft all you need to do is you need to find a village and you need to gather a few basic resources. This is always a very important major build that you need to start as soon as possible. Everything involves uh, iron when you're crafting. So it's important to get as much of it as possible. So we've got a basic iron farm here. We've added a few adjustments to it since the last time I've shown this. Uh, we've got uh, two item filters so we can sort out the poppies from this farm. And those get burnt right over here. I think you'll be able to hear this tick Tick on here in just a second. There we go, poppies destroyed. And then over here we have the um, filter for the iron. And then this line here shuts it off when it's full. Uh, this is the part that's responsible for allowing the villagers to work and sleep. Is it gets the zombie out of their uh, vision so they can interact with their workstation and their bed. Um, very basic an easy farm to set up um, hardest part is moving the villagers and the zombie and getting them in place but this is something that you should always build the beginning of any world this farm produces about one stack every 10 minutes and it's always running because it's in the spawn chunks so build this in the spawn chunks very very basic farm we have so many poppies now that we can go ahead and, and burn all the rest of our poppies but yeah this farm is uh, is very important. I would always build this as your first major project in any world. Just as a disclaimer, I know AFK fish farms exist, and they are really useful for grinding through uh, really quickly the beginning of the game, getting all of your tools and armor enchanted and getting experience. Um, and those enchanted books are really useful. Uh, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be trading with villagers. I've done AFK fish farms on my last few uh my last few plays through on Minecraft. So we're gonna be doing it without it this time. Maybe later we'll build one uh, once we have everything we need, but we're not gonna be building it in the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to work on your starter base. So we decided to build ours on top of the hill and we constructed our starter base right here. And this goes all the way up. We've got a water bubble column in the middle so that way you can get up really quickly. Uh, we've also had to expand it to include the other things you need like a brewing station which is in this tree right here and an enchantment station in this tree uh, those come a little bit later but uh, they're part of any basic uh, any basic base right along with the storage system which as you can see is uh, is a uh, very basic uh, I said basic too many times moving on And you're also gonna wanna build a basic furnace array. This is at Y level 11 in our mine. And this is a really good way to get fuel right off the bat. You're gonna wanna use lava, not use all of your coal that you're gonna get. Because you're gonna wanna build torches to light up the surrounding areas. Um, lava is just a great free source of uh, smelting in the beginning. So this isn't anything, uh, anything special. We'll get to that later. Moving on. Now that you're established, you should be able to get some diamonds, get some redstone, and tackle our next project, which is a mob farm. This is a really easy mob farm to set up. You're going to need dispensers, which are going to be the most costly thing. Uh, you're going to have to go kill some spiders. But once you do that, you're going to collect all of the spider drops, the skeleton drops, the enderman drops, and 
the creeper drops to give you a lot of basic resources you're going to need for rockets later on and for automatic bone meal farms. This is going to be really important, not to mention the ender pearls to find the dragon. But what are you going to do with all that bone meal? I'll tell you what, we're going to build a nano farm. This is a really great way to get a bunch of food source for free and uh, to help with all your farming needs. So uh, this thing has a bunch of bone meal and five dispensers. We turn it on, they fire and instant grow and, and harvest our crop. So this is designed by Il Mango. Let's go ahead and check it out. If we turn it on and hold shift and right click in the corner, we can see we're instantly growing our wheat. Um, we can use this to uh, to our advantage to get tons of food or to help out with farming. Let's go ahead and turn it off. And as you can see, we've got plenty of wheat to feed our to feed our uh, livestock and to eat. So we should be fine for food for quite a while. All right, we're not done yet. We have to accomplish a few more things before we can go fight the dragon. One is we need to go to the nether, so we got to collect some obsidian. And then we can do things like get a brewing stand set up and transport villagers. Um, we also need an enchantment station. And once we have our villagers and enchantment stations, we can gear up, but only after we get some experience. So we need an XP farm. So once we get all of those things accomplished, we can go fight the dragon. Brewing, enchanting, and trading. I know that uh, that went by pretty quickly, but it takes a little bit longer to set all that up. But uh, it's done, and uh, to much of our benefit. Did you see one emerald and one book for mending? That's a pretty good trade. Uh, if you didn't know, you can cure a zombie villager and then turn him into a librarian and reset his trade by breaking his stand, his work stand, and then placing it back down until you get the trade you want. Um, and that's how I was able to get one emerald for one mending book. But now we need to put all of that stuff on, so let's go ahead and take a look at our XP farm. This experience farm is pretty cool. It allows us to smell things to gain experience, and this can just run passively while we're in the area. So we need to be able to uh, enchant our gear, so we need 30 levels so we can get that here. We need to be able to put books on to our enchanted gear, and then we need to be able to repair it with mending. So these work by having farms that automatically generate fuel, bamboo, and something smeltable, cactus. So we we make cactus and bamboo and they go into these furnaces and in about an hour it should fill up all eight furnaces. How do you generate all that bamboo and cactus? Um, you copy a zero tick farm. This is a design from Il Mango. Now don't ask me how the specifics of it work, but the thing is you just want to push the sand block really fast back and forth and that'll cause it to grow and then you collect it. And that goes into these hoppers and goes into the smelting array. So let's go ahead and see it on. So now it's running and we're auto collecting this and this will shut off when it fills up right here. It'll run this line again and turn it off. But that auto collects our bamboo. And then we have another one over here for our cactus. The cactus farm isn't reliable. We need to build a better one, but that's how you can build an XP farm with furnaces. Congratulations, that is everything you need to fight the dragon. You have the ability to get all the experience and all the enchantments that you need, and you should have enough to get all the, uh, the weapons you need as well. As long as you have the diamonds and, uh, and the resources from the nether, you should be able to make your way to where the dragon is at. Mm -hmm.